Being a member of Delta Sigma Theta has been everything to me. So much of who I am is rooted in my experience as a Delta. Being a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated on an HBCU campus is like no other. You're a member of the best organization, you're attending one of the best types of institutions there are, and it taught you that you can be whoever you decide you want to be, and you have a whole gang of women behind you supporting you. I find myself in rooms with powerful women all the time, and majority of them tend to be Delta women. We have this expectation of one another to be excellent. And I think I live my life centered in sisterhood, scholarship, and service. That core foundation of social justice and change is literally rooted in everything that I do. When we talk about dynamic Deltas, the list goes on and on. Angela Bassett, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Dr. Dorothy Height. I think about the Leslie Fosters and the Allison Seymours of the world, two Sawras who embraced me in this news business. I am thankful for women like them because I look at the success that they've had in their communities, and I know that I can do that too because they've paved the way for me. I was literally raised around women of Delta Sigma Theta. As a child, my grandmother had sorority meetings at her house. My grandmother's best friend and someone who was like an aunt to me was Sora Mona Humphreys Bailey. Dynamic women who carried themselves with beauty and style and grace, they were the women that did the work. I remember in high school learning about the women's movement, suffrage movement, and I was always so curious about the black women who were like in the back of the pictures. And in history class, we're talking about all of these suffragists, and I'm like, yeah, but who's that black woman? And who are these women over here? And come to find out, some of them were my founders of Delta Sigma Theta, and I started to interrogate that. Everything that I do, I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of our 22 founders. Working in the fashion industry, I'm always wearing multiple designers, but I know that whatever I'm doing and whenever I'm doing something and creating something, I want to be able to touch people. For example, my clothing line, that I didn't want anyone feeling like left out. That was so important to me and making it at a price point that they can experience it. When I think about the service that Delta does, I think of back to the summer of 2020, when there was so much unrest after the murders of George Floyd, after the murder of Breonna Taylor, that thousands of people in a global pandemic flocked to the nation's capital to march on Washington. And a large group of those people were women of Delta Sigma Theta. My role in that day was to make sure I got the information out, was to make sure that I told the story. But my Sawras were there making sure that our voices were heard. I'm hopeful that in the work that I do, I get to help other people understand that they are also on a divine journey, that they also have gifts and talents that aren't just for themselves, but literally for the world. When I think about my divine journey, I use this phrase all the time that trials are not absent from life, but God is still so very good. The journey may not always be easy, it may not always be smooth, but you just gotta keep going. That's been my journey is just to keep moving, never stay still, never stay stagnant. A young woman came up to me and she was like, Alana, I have to, I have to introduce myself to you. You are the reason why I wanted to go to Howard. To know that I could be that for the next generation and that I'm setting the tone for what they can be and what the options are for them, then I feel like I'm doing the work that I need to do.